that's with a uh, SD card, or you could put a memory stick in here, and with the battery inside. So really light, and obviously this lens, you can tell just from the size alone, no matter how high quality it was, it, it couldn't possibly be that heavy, but this is the kit zoom, so you're looking at a combination of mostly plastic, a little bit of metal, so not very heavy. That said, unlike any X's of old, you get more professional style controls on this, and it has a slightly more professional look to it. It doesn't look as kind of, well, unique as the NEX system did. Things like the dials back here we get, thank goodness, our standard PASM, Intelligent Auto, and everything else kind of control. A secondary dial over here for controlling stuff on the menu system. The menu system also uses the Sony Alpha style. Gone is the old NEX kind of point-and-shoot oriented icon based thing that I never really loved, but maybe somebody out there did. I don't know. Pretty much everybody's always complained about it. We got the pop-up flash over here as well. Sony's active hot shoe on top. A whole lot of customizable buttons going on over here. The usual dial rotary wheel over here with clicky tilty thing. FN to bring up quick settings on it. Your playback, your programmables. Another customizable up here and obviously this is your shutter button and the on off and notice that there's a decent grip on here. And this guy is mostly a metal body with a nice textured grip on it. So it looks like a, a pretty nice camera. It's trying to compete with Olympus's Micro Four Thirds and some Panasonic's, that kind of thing. So it's a quality piece. But the price isn't that bad. Six forty nine dollars for the body only. That's the same price as the outgoing NEX6 was. And honestly, you're getting a higher megapixel rating here. You're getting actually a new sensor altogether. You're getting the new Bions X processor on here. So there's a lot to recommend this over the outgoing NEX6. The NEX7 is also going away. Sony wants people, I think, to move into the Alpha 7 that we also review, which is a full frame. A lot more expensive, though, but honestly, given the new sensor on here, the, the, the very good Bions processor, I personally would pick this over the NEX7 if you find one still in a store somewhere. And to show the evolution of the NEX line, now I have the funny little accessory flash that came in the box. Here's the original NEX5. Looks more like a hybridized point and shoot, doesn't it? Notice there's no viewfinder on here. Anywhere. You got the LCD on the back and then that's that. This guy, one of the things it adds over the A5000 is the OLED viewfinder. Something that Sony really excels at. We've liked that a lot on their RX10, on their A7, and again here. And that's a 1.4 million dot viewfinder. Yes, that resolution actually does go down a bit from the NEX6, NEX7, but you know what? It still looks pretty good. So I know some people are saying, how could Sony ever downgrade a spec on this? Well, considering that they're keeping the price at 649 and everything else got so much better, I think it's okay. Now, I'm going to continue to provide some specs, but you know how it is with cameras, especially if you're camera enthusiast types. There's myriad specs. You can visit Sony's website and get all those. I'm going to describe the experience of using the camera, how well it does, and some of the key specs without getting extra super geeky and giving you what you could actually read yourself on a website. So here's what our display looks like. This is a 3-inch LCD that actually has an outdoor brightness mode that's pretty good and functional. We have 90 degree tilt in this direction, and then we have 45 degree down. We do not have sideways. We do not have the, the flip it and drop it down beneath the body like some bigger Sony Alpha digital SLRs have. This one is 921,000 dots. Again, it's three inches. So that's about the equivalent of 800 by 600. Now, right now it's in intelligent auto plus mode. So say we put it in something like program where you can actually control some more things. We have a little screen that gives you a hint on what those things do. You can turn off that little hint screen if you want. So say we hit the function button right now. Here we have quick access to things like white balance or flash control, all sorts of handy things. So that's pretty darn useful. Now, if you're shooting in something like intelligent auto, it's going to set all of that stuff. You can choose your creative style. You get the idea right there. And if we hit the menu button to see what the menus look like, there you go. Standard alpha menus. Any of you who've used a Sony alpha digital SLR will find these familiar. So gone are the little icons that you have to click on an icon and then explore and try to find where your settings are. I think this is much more straightforward. Obviously, as you can see here on the screen, you can shoot in JPEG in various qualities. You can shoot in RAW in JPEG, which I always recommend, even though this has quite a good JPEG engine on camera. I haven't always said that about Sony cameras, but this one actually really brings out the colors, brings out the contrast. It does still like to over sharpen, so sometimes your grass can be a little bit dizzying, but overall, I think it does a good job. Anyway, Sony's usual 
Aspect ratio is 3 to 2 right there, which is a little different from the usual 4 by 3 that you'll see on other cameras. And you can shoot in AVC HD video, which is, uh, you know, most common. And for AVC HD, you can see all the options that we have here. So pretty healthy, all the way up to 24 megabit per second for 60i, 28 if you go up to 60p, and then you've got 24p. Obviously, if you're in a different country where you have 50 I and 50p instead, you'll just see 50i and 50p instead of 60. Now one of the benefits of this camera compared to other compact cameras and even SLRs is the fact that it's a mirrorless camera. What does that mean? It means no pen and prism, no difficulty with pulling focus. It can do continuous autofocus and Sony has done a lot of improvement with their continuous autofocus for shooting still shots too. You can do up to 11 frames continuous shot and now we have continuous autofocus. There's no more of that put it in that funny priority mode that they used to have and it really initially focuses in the first shot and then uses that same focus for all of them. Now it really does continually autofocus. Likewise with video, they have always done a good job and this is a fantastic video camera. Sony's pretty good at making dual purpose cameras where really both functions are almost equally important I would say to the design. So you've got continuous autofocus here. You don't have to pull your own focus. It doesn't hunt. It doesn't go you know all the time fiddling with the focus on it. Really sharp 1080p. It's quite good and we're going to splice in some footage so you can see how it does including some challenging shots of some ducks on the water between the splashing of the water which usually would create artifacting in the movement. You get an idea really good for video. And speaking of video, as with Sony cameras, there's always a little red button to press. They have made it harder to press. I don't know if people accidentally were triggering it before, but it's kind of a little bit off angle over here. And you've got to work a little hard to press it because it's kind of no longer sticking out anymore. You can shoot in any of the modes that you want, or you can actually put it in movie mode if you want. And then you can change all of your settings, your aperture, your shutter, that kind of thing. Now, when you're doing something like shooting video, you probably want to use a continuous aperture lens if you can. Obviously, the kit lens is a budget lens. That means the aperture varies depending on where you're zooming. See how it says 3.5 to 5.6 for your aperture? The aperture will change. 3.5 when it's at the wide angle, go up to 5.6 at telephoto. So for those of you who are not photo pros, that's how that works. So that means your exposure is changing. You might want to make adjustments when you're shooting video, and that's kind of not always the cool thing to do, right? So there are other lenses, obviously, that Sony makes. When the NEX first came out, it was a lens poor device. That's not the case anymore. They have about 15 lenses or so that are E-mount lenses, and this uses Sony's E-mount lens. You can also use the new FE, full-frame E-mount lenses, if you want. It's going to change the focal length even more. We'll talk about that a little bit later, too. But anyway... This is their step-up lens right here, and this is not too huge a lens. This is obviously constant aperture f4, 16 to 70 millimeters. So this is kind of equivalent to that Canon L f4 lens that I showed you, because if you do the conversion, this is an APS-C sensor, so that means 1.5 is the multiplication factor to get to your usual full frame or 35 millimeter measurement. This equals your 24 to 105 zoom lens. This is a Zeiss lens. It's got some nice metal in it. The quality feels good on it. And I know, you know, it's a funny thing. There has been so much talk about this lens, whether it's worth the money, whether it's crap, whether it's any good. And honestly, going from the kit lens, and this is better than the average kit lens, wow, colors and contrast, noticeably better. And that is honestly the important thing. I know you guys obsess on MTF numbers and the resolution, how sharp it is, how many pixels, looking at things one-to-one. -one. I mean, nobody looks at things one-to-one -one anymore. These things are way higher resolution than even 4K monitors when they shoot pictures. Don't do that, really. If it looks really sharp to your eye, that's probably less to do with the resolution, the resolving power of the lens, than the contrast that it's bringing, because it, contrast makes things look sharper. All of these lenses, even the kit lenses, are pretty darn sharp, sharp, and you can shoot really big enlargements and still have sharpness, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, really sharp after all that's said and done, especially in the center. Yes, the corners can get a little soft. Yes, there is some distortion. More and more with these cameras, digital cameras, we're seeing lenses that have compensation in the bodies for those things. And if you're shooting in JPEG, it, you won't see any distortion. It, it fixes that problem. It'll sharpen up the corners a bit. And also, 
Adobe, Photoshop, Lightroom, those kind of things, they all have lens corrections for those issues. But yes, there is some distortion as you go to very wide angle or even onto telephoto and a little softness in the corners, but honest to God, I, I, unless you're looking at this one-to-one, 100% enlargement, you're not going to be able to tell. So that's the lens, because I know there's been a lot of talk about that. A lot of you are wondering if it's really worth it. I say it is. Now our kid lens here, it, it's pretty cool actually. You know, you can get this body only if you don't have this lens, and this lens has been bundled with some other NEXs. It's a good walk around lens, the 16 to 50, which would convert up to a 3x zoom starting at 24 millimeter and going out to about 75 or so. That's a pretty useful set of focal lengths and it may not be the sharpest, it may not be the most contrasty and colorful, but it's actually surprisingly decent, especially if you're shooting around f8 or so. So I would recommend it if you don't have it already because it makes the camera this small and this portable and that's just darn crazy. And it is a motorized zoom, so I can use this lever if I want or I can use the zoom ring, especially if I turn the camera on again. And there it is, so you can see that goes in and goes out. So you can use this to zoom or you can use this. The point of the powered zoom is it's nice for video. It's quiet and it's smooth. Now some places, like I think B&H is doing this. I know Best Buy is offering another bundle where you get the kit zoom lens here which is actually in the box. It's the standard Sony kit. And it's, this is the ILC 6000 camera. If it's 6000 L it means there's a lens bundled inside the box. But they're also bundling this at a really attractive price and you can see right here, this is the 55 to 210. Now this is your equivalent to a, basically a kit zoom. And you can see this, the aperture of 4.5 to 6.3, which is about normal standard apertures that you're going to find on a kit lens. It too is actually not bad at all. The contrast and colors are pretty decent on it for a relatively speaking affordable lens. As you can see, it has st image stabilization, optical steady shot on this, important for a long zoom. It's not too heavy. It doesn't feel cheesy either. It's not too, too long does pop out if you're going out to 210, but I've used it to capture some, some birds and some squirrels and things like that. And honestly, for the price, if you're getting this bundle, you might find it for like $150 additional, even some crazier sales. I say go for it if you're the kind of person that is a bird shooter, you need that kind of distance. Now, Sony claims this is the world's fastest focusing camera. Is that true? Well, I don't know, but it's, it's pretty darn fast. So here, we're going to take a picture of the lens. We're going to focus on something really close, which is the lens cap that's right over here, which you can do at wide angle. Yes, it's a fast focusing camera, 179 point autofocus, that's 179 point of phase detection. And what's important, the coverage is improved to 92% of the viewing area, it used to be 50% on our older NEXs, so more points where it can actually use the phase detection autofocus and has 24 point traditional contrast detection also. So yes, it's fast. Again, you've got continuous shooting on here as well. So it's a quick camera and there's no lens hunting, which is nice too. I, I've had some older Sony Alphas and even some of my Canon not so great lenses and boy, you can get some serious hunting going on. Even in low light, this is a pretty good focuser. It has an amber focus assist light and I always find that turning that off on Sony cameras makes for better autofocusing. Go figure. As you can see here, it has Wi-Fi. It also has NFC, that's single band, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. You can use that for image transfer. You can also use Sony's iOS and Android apps if you want to do some remote control of photo shooting, not video, but photo. As is labeled here, we have our micro HDMI and we have a multi-connector, AV connector, combo USB 2.0. This can output clean HDMI up to 4K photo output if you want to do it to a 4K TV, obviously. So that's pretty neat and a pretty professional feature. Sony's been doing that a lot of their cameras lately that we've looked at. Uh, what it doesn't have is an audio mic jack, which is a real shame, because if you're starting to get more serious, and this has all the bells and whistles for some really serious video shooting, I wouldn't mind using this to do our videos, for example. You can't plug in an external mic. Now there are, again, for Sony's multi hot shoe, there are mics that you can get that plug in here, but if you want something that's off camera, physically not sitting, located right here, you're kind of out of luck, which is too bad. Camera does actually have a flash, that's kind of nice. And it's a little kind of nifty, delicate little devil right here. So it, I wouldn't abuse this thing. You can actually pull it around though and do some neat little bounce flash work. And it's just enough to act as a fill flash or to brighten up the scene. So it, it is actually helpful to have that. Obviously you can get Sony hot shoe flashes if you want to. 
Now, as I mentioned, this is an E-mount lens, like it says right here. So you're going to use Sony E-mount lenses. You can also use A-mount lenses, which are for the bigger Alpha SLRs. And they have adapters, the EA2, the EA4. Those are the two that you would probably want to pick if you want autofocus. And the EA4 supports contract, contrast and phase detection built into the low adapter. Now, the, the thing with those things is going to make well, your camera bigger. Those are pretty hunky adapters that, you know, comes out to about here, blocky things. So I'm not too thrilled with doing that myself. I'd rather, if there's an e-lens that exists that does the job for me, I would rather just get the e-lens. And this is standard screw-on kind of deal right here, the usual release lever for your lens is right there. And then you just press that and unscrew it. And there we go. And there's the insides of our camera. And that just screws right back on. This guy uses the same battery as previous NEX models, also as the Alpha A7 and A7R. Right there is your W Series 1080 milliamp battery. Sony says 310 to 360 shots, depending on whether you're using the viewfinder, which actually uses more power, or the back LCD on it. And guess what? Good news. And so you can see this is the NPFW50 battery. Pretty easy to find if you need spares. If you're upgrading from another NEX and you have spares, good times. You already have the battery. The charger's in the box. Yay. Uh, un unlike the, the RX10 and the A7 that we reviewed where there's a USB cord and you have to actually charge the battery inside the camera and not be able to use the camera while you're doing that, you get a charger in the box. So good times. You don't have to run out and buy a separate charger. And on the bottom, we have a standard tripod pod mount right over here as well, of course. So how about image quality? Something this small, and honestly, believe it or not, for $649, that's pretty cheap for one of these mirrorless kind of interchangeable lens cameras or even micro four-thirds cameras. You might wonder, well, how good could it possibly be? It's really, really good. And we're going to splice in some photos for you to take a look at for yourself, but really stunning results. And those photos, by the way, are either rendered in JPEG in the camera or they're raw, and I have processed them pretty minimally, a little, little sharpness, a little vibrance enhanced, just a little bit. So I'm not doing crazy things with those images to make them look really nifty and great. And it has surpassed my Alpha A65, which is a compact digital SLR, that SLT kind of camera that Sony makes. Wow, that's pretty darn impressive. Is it going to beat my, my Canon 60? Not quite, but there's a difference in the way the images are rendered. Sony has a kind of, I don't know how to put it, except for a, a cool, sharp, great for street photography kind of look to it, where Canon still has that warm, I want to be your portrait camera, or have really warm, full, colorful shots for sports. It's very great for that. So there's a difference in the way they render, for starters. But obviously, you're going to get even more resolution and detail. And particularly, you're going to gather more light on a full-frame camera. If you're talking about full-frame, you should be looking more at Sony's A7 or A7R. But as competing with digital SLRs on the market, including some of Canon's better offerings, like the uh, 70D, it really holds its own. It's shockingly good. I'm very impressed. And a lot of that is the Bions X processor. It's the software inside of here, mated with Sony's lens. They just really have done a very good job. Think of it as your little developer room guru or your Photoshop guru inside the camera, You're just getting really nice shots out of it. Intelligent Auto does a very good job most of the time. The HDR mode is pretty effective. It doesn't create milky, excessively kind of mid grays kind of pictures. Overall, really, really impressed with this camera. So that's the Sony Alpha A6000. It's available now. So is the A5000 for those of you who want a more consumer point and shoot kind of experience. But really, this one, is, it, this is obviously more for the enthusiasts, the photo buffs, the people who already have a digital SLR, but they want something portable so they can take with them with a whole lot of bang for the buck. Really good image quality here. This is an easy one to recommend. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.